Hey there, I'm Lisa Doyle with Serena Real Estate. Welcome to our monthly market update. Everyone's been asking questions about the market and where's everything headed and what about interest rates and all that stuff. So I have one of my favorite mortgage lenders. This is Daryl Nelson. Hi, um, I'm, I'm Daryl Nelson with Diversified Capital Funding located in Walnut Creek and Danville. Yeah, exactly. And I know Daryl's such a um, vast knowledge about the market and kind of how things are going. So thank you so much for helping. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so we're going to go over a little bit of data on the market right now, and then we'll talk to Daryl a little bit about what everyone's asking, right? Is, you know, everybody's going a little crazy about right. great questions and things oh, like that. So one of the things I like to share um, when it gives people a chance to look at the market is, of course, we, we track what's called the, the active and pending ratio, right? So mm -hmm. active listings versus what's right. pending. It kind of tells you the trend, right? Right. So back when the market had hit very bottom, back in 2011, we had about 2,400 active listings in our East Bay, right. which is massive, right? right? Massive. I mean, East Bay is not that, it's not, It's a big area, but it's not like that big. It's all, all the way from like Livermore, we track the 580, the 680 corridor, you know, the highway, like 24, right. and then down to like the Clayton. So it's a pretty okay. broad, okay. but 24 active, 100 active listings. And at that time, that was again, the bottom of the market. Um, there was about maybe a thousand pending. Right. So a big um, oversupply, yeah. right. right? And so at the very peak of our market, um, I'm going to give you data for today, but the lowest inventory we've had this year was February and March. Mm -hmm. There was about 350 active listings and about 1,200 pending. Oh my gosh. So that's the that's, swing of, you know. dramatic. Dramatic swing. Yeah. Like inventory was, you know, at the all-time low. And we still are low today, but we are seeing a little bit of uh, increase in inventory. Some of it's seasonal. And some of it might just be the state of what we're seeing, mm -hmm. you know, in the market. So I want to give you guys some statistics on a few of the cities in our area. And then Daryl and I are going to talk a little bit about interest rates and stuff like that. What's going on with you? So right now in our entire East Bay, in that area that we talked about, there are right now 782 active listings okay. versus, again, February, 340 right. some, right? Wow. So big difference, about double the inventory. And there's 1,031 houses that are pending. So still um, a greater... Uh, you know, greater pending than active, which right. is a good, still a good trend. I mean, the market's still super healthy. But I, one interesting statistic is back in 2018, you, you remember our market was a little right. softer, right? Right. Interest rates were 5%-ish. Right. Yeah. Um, back then, not one of our cities had more um, pending than active. Okay. So like, for instance, San Ramon had about 140, 150 active listings and maybe 80 pending, right? Right. But this is the first time in the last two years so San Ramon, right now, there's 75 active listings and 78 pending. Wow. This is the first time it's been more level right. um, in two years. So we're starting to see just okay. a little bit more of what you might say, a little bit of normalizing. Right. Um, but every city in our area does have more uh, pending than active. So Danville has 65 active, 71 pending. Mm -hmm. Still um, a little bit more of an even market than what we've had at, over the last two years. Right. Um, some of the standout markets, um, Livermore has been one of, one of our more heated places. There's only 95 active listings and 131 pending. So that, that area has shown a little bit more heat. And then the other area that we're seeing a little bit more heat in also is um, the Concord area, which we don't work that area as much. We're more central, but I like to track it so that everyone can right. see. Uh, 105 active and 152 pending. Wow. Yeah. So overall, we're still seeing a healthy market. Just We're definitely seeing a seasonal increase in inventory. Mm -hmm. And it might be a market... Um, you know, the market's showing some signs of stabilizing a little bit, which we're going to talk about that. Um, but overall, still healthy, guys. And then I'm going to go over a little bit more data after Daryl and I talk. So so where are we with rates? And that's the biggest question. Like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> the, how much have they gone the, up? The daily question or yeah. maybe even hourly or even minute question, depending on the market. Yeah. It really depends on the program itself. Okay. So one of the things that we've seen that has happened is that what we call the Fannie Mae rates, which in you know primarily Contra Costa County, right. that loan amount goes up to nine hundred seventy thousand, and those rates prior to COVID, the jumbo rates were always better than those rates, and then during COVID, with the Federal Reserve being so involved in trying to get rates lower, mm -hmm. those rates actually turn out to be lower than the jumbo rates, and we have since unwound that position. So the jumbo rates are, uh, and again. Primarily loan amounts above nine hundred seventy thousand. Okay. Those rates are running like on a thirty-year fixed loan, probably somewhere in the mid to mid to high four percent range on okay. the thirty-year fix. By comparison, if we look at loan amounts that are like on you know some of the Fannie Mae rates, my goodness, those rates are like in the low to mid five percent range now. Wow. And so that gap is widening. Yeah. And there are certain things we can do to kind of counteract that. Uh, one of the things that's very popular for clients right now is that for those clients <coughs> that have a loan amount 
of let's say above six hundred forty-seven thousand. Right, which used to be our conforming. Which, which right? we are conforming, yeah. and that's yeah. actually the national level. Yeah. But we have what they call high cost counties in the most of the counties in the surrounding Bay Area. And they just went up like over this last year. Right? It went, they, yeah, they, well, yeah. that just that just tells you how much the market's gone up in terms of appreciation. We've, yeah. we've all seen. Yeah, that loan amount went from eight hundred twenty-two thousand to nine hundred seventy thousand, yeah. so and it goes increase. up every year. Largest increase that I've ever seen in my thirty years in the business. Yeah. And what, however, though, what we've been doing for clients to try to save them as much as possible is for, we have some jumbo investors that define the jumbo rate as $1 over the national Fannie Mae loan amount and not our lower. loan amount. Right. And so let's say, for example, we have a client that, you know, they're buying a, you know, million dollar house or whatever, and they've got a larger down payment. Let's say they're putting 20% down. Right. Well, normally that might be a high balance loan and they might be in that high mid to high 5% range. Well, we have some jumbo investors that will allow us to do their jumbo rate at a lower rate. Right. So we can still get them a rate like in that low to mid 4% range on the on the 30 year fix. Well, and I have to tell everyone too, is one of the advantages of working with someone who's a mortgage broker um, versus like a bank, right? You walk right. into Wells Fargo, they don't have the ability to find the difference, like more options, right? You've got more selection of yeah. Investor options. Well, we're, yeah, and we're somewhat of a hybrid because we are a direct lender like mm -hmm. a bank in that we do lend our own money. Yeah. And the other thing that we do too is that we also have some of these companies and are actually some large banks that want to work with us because of the size of our volume relative mm -hmm. to, you know, we're not, you know, we're certainly not, uh, you know, your B of A's or your Wells right. Fargo's. We don't want to be, right. right? But I mean, we still, our parent company still did like $20 billion last year. And so what that allows you to do when you get a company that size in terms of being an independent, the companies want to come to you. Mm -hmm. So we go through, we work with companies on what's called a correspondent level, meaning we underwrite to their guidelines, we close the loan, and we sell the loan to them, but they never see the file until after it's closed. Right. And they trust us to underwrite it to their guidelines. Uh, at the same time, we also are a full service mortgage broker. Mm -hmm. And to your point, what that allows us to do is most companies that call themselves a direct lender slash broker, right. they can only broker if their company doesn't offer the product, right? Well, the, the reality is is that most companies have very similar products. Right. Our company has a unique uh, situation where they we kind of they kind of have to compete for our business. We have the freedom to broker out. Mm -hmm. Now, there's benefits to doing it in house because you get the benefit of. Um, having more control over the process. Yeah. And it's so, smoother that way. You don't smoother, have to worry by, about it. By all means. I mean, you know, when you broker the deal, you, you send a loan to them and you just, you do as much as you can and you kind of sit back and wait. Mm -hmm. Whereas when it's in-house, you know, I can, you know, I get loan approvals on Sunday mornings, right? Yeah, exactly. And so you're not going to get that at the big banks, right. right? Or if I have an issue, I can go to my operations manager and she can reach out to one of our VPs and have something resolved Honestly, that we've had things mm -hmm. resolved in hours, which banks might take days to get resolved. Exactly. Or so weeks. there's certainly a benefit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there's certainly a benefit to that. So it's just kind of that right combination of rate and service to yeah. take care of that. So um, we were just chatting before we um, started our update today. Is um, the Fed is talking again this week? Yes. I've been told. Yeah. So you were sharing that a lot of the banks or mortgage companies have taken into consideration the Fed's conversation. So everyone's oh, yes. panicking that the Fed's going to raise rates again. So tell them a little bit about that. Is we may not see a rise in actual interest rates. Yeah so, yeah, so basically what happens is when we're looking at what they call like the fixed income markets, and these are, you know, government bonds, even, you know, 10-year bonds and 30-year mm -hmm. bonds, uh, the markets tend to price in er, like things way in advance. So, for example, the Federal Reserve is going to meet this Wednesday, yeah. and they're going to announce that most likely they're going to raise rates a quarter of a percent. Right. You know, the hope is, which we, I'll talk about in a second, Maybe it's a half a percent to our benefit. But what that means is, is that that doesn't mean your fixed rates go up that much. Right. If you have an equity line, it goes up by that much because of the well, type like of index. Credit cards and treasury rates. And exactly, like exactly. Okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. But this has pretty much been priced in. And what we were talking about uh, a little bit earlier is that the market actually would probably benefit by a larger increase by the Federal Reserve because what that would be interpreted is that the market is getting ahead of inflation. They're really being aggressive right. with that. And that could actually bode well for interest rates because, you know, it's not like we're going to suddenly go up because of that increase. Again, it's just a matter of 
you know, what's, what are they planning on doing in the future? Because they meet every six weeks and they're going to continue raising rates to fight yeah. inflation. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like, so one of the questions that we get a lot from people is, um, you know, after this inflationary trend mm -hmm. settles down, right? right? Which it will, right? We'll yes, probably absolutely. see over these next few years, like hopefully sooner than that, yes. this, the inflation trends will settle down. Do you think then rates will then again go down? Would that be a your... Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And the biggest, um, the this seems to me kind of similar to, because I got started in the business in 92, and I remember 93 was a really good year. Mm -hmm. 94, not so good. Yeah, and we had Federal, a little bit of a... Oh, no, yeah. it, was, it wasn't a little bit. It was, it was a, a big, lot. yeah. The Federal Reserve raised rates, I believe, during the 94 calendar year, I believe they raised them 4%, and fixed rates went up 2%. Well, we've seen that 2% increase already. already. Mm -hmm. And so after that happened, the market, you know, the, and they get ahead of the inflation, then we start seeing things come down. So I do anticipate, and, you know, with a, high, with a pretty fair level of comfort knowing that, I think rates will come down in the next, you know, two, three, four years. Yeah. Because we don't just go shooting up like this. And once the Federal Reserve does get a handle on inflation, yeah. or even more importantly, it's interpreted they got a handle right. on inflation. Exactly. Because unfortunately, it's all impression more oh than gosh. necessarily. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Perception is more important than reality exactly. whenever it yeah. comes to the interest rates. So once they get ahead of that, we will see an improvement. Yeah. And so one of the things that some people will do if they're a little bit more, you know, if they want to take a little bit more of a risk is maybe instead of a 30 year fix, Maybe consider something where the rate is it's a, still a 30-year loan, but the fixed rate portion might be, let's say, seven years or right. 10 years. Right. And as I, we were talking about before, we have a new product uh, partnership coming up with a credit union in San Jose that we are pretty much going to be the only company that does loans for them. Yeah. And what I'm understanding, which is even better, is that I think they're actually allowing us to even create our own guidelines. Yeah, because those seven year, you know, and I have to say the average typically, um, most people that we've worked with over the years, you know, that, that 10 year window is about when people start to Absolutely. move either up or down or yeah. out or, you know, transfers or things like that happen. Yes. So, you know, that is one thing that you can always do is go ahead and go with a 10 year loan and then just know that you're, if you choose, you can refinance it somewhere along yeah. the along the way as soon as rates settle down. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And to take that one step further, over my you know, 30 years in the business, there's never been a time that I can look back at any time over the last seven to 10 years and there wasn't an opportunity where rates might have been lower. Yeah. So if yeah. that continues, then, mm -hmm. you know, For sure. we should be okay. So um, so bottom line, it sounds like rates, you know, we're likely to see things kind of continue to rate to rise we're, this year. Is we're that probably going to go higher yeah. before we go lower. Okay. But I do have clients that if they're that, at, you know, adamant, you know, we could look at some creative strategy. Some yeah. companies say, hey, Maybe let's not buy the rate down. And what I mean by buy the rate down is, let's say on a million dollar loan, you elect to say, well, I want to pay one point, which is 1% of the loan amount. And each and each one point gets you about a quarter percent lower in the interest rate. Right. So you're, and so you're, pre you're prepaying your interest. You're prepaying the interest to get yeah. that lower rate. Yeah. And some people, if they feel strong enough that they think rates are going to get better, they don't want to pay all that money up front because it might take you know, five to seven years to recoup that money. Right. And so what they're saying is, well, wait, wait a minute here. What if I don't pay points? What if, the, as a lender, we go a little higher in the rate and actually pay your closing costs? Mm -hmm. And for what it's worth, you know, in terms of myself, I've always done my own loans that way. Mm -hmm. I, I always go to the higher rate. I'd rather have, you know, this might come as a shock being a lender, but I hate closing costs, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd rather go as high as, you know, higher in the rate knock out my closing costs, that higher rate yields me a little bit better tax return yeah. right off. Granted, we're limited because of the loan amounts right. with the tax, right. you know, the tax laws. But by doing that, you know, my break even point is so yeah. seven, eight, nine years, I know I'm going to refinance before then. Yeah. And in this case where we've seen rates just go up so fast, it's really hard to make, to, to decide to do that. But for those that decided to do it, they might find themselves saving, saving thousands by yeah. the time they refinance. Exactly. So that's interesting. So yeah. a couple more statistics I want to share with you guys. So on average, this is another question I get from everyone. Okay. Now, certain neighborhoods are more than this, but this is the whole entire average, right? right. Average uh, sold prices um, in our area uh, last year were 1.225,457. Okay. So like 1225457 The average um, over this last you know, 22 right. has been 1,446,957. Okay. So we've had an average sales price rise of 
a few hundred thousand dollars just right. in this short period of time, right. which is, that's in my 35 years, and I've never seen anything like this as far as the gain. And so even if the market settles a little bit, we've had such an explosion. It's, we're still in such a great position. So, Absolutely. And there's always that little bit of ebbs and flows, right, and cycles. Another thing that's interesting is median price. So the median is always less than the average, right, at least mm -hmm. when, you, when you judge it on a, on a, on a, on a broader area. The median prices went from a million fifty to one million two forty six. So again, medium average. We all know that they've gone up a lot. Some neighborhoods I've seen in the last two years or three years are almost doubling. Right. So we've had such an aggressive rise in interest rates. Um, and then one thing that everyone always likes to know too is this last you know few months, what's the highest sale in our area? I know one just went pending uh, yesterday at just about ten million, which is higher oh, than wow. that's okay. higher than we generally see. The average closed price is five million eight hundred, and that was in Lafayette. That's okay. kind of interesting. Everyone always wants to know. Yeah. You know, what's our highest sale in, the, in our little East Bay? Right. Um, but the data is definitely showing that we are still healthy, yes. still strong, right. um, although we are starting to see a little bit more of a leveling out as far as your, your supply and demand. So active and dependent right. ratios are starting to kind of become a little bit more stable. Right. You know, but still definitely a seller strong market. Um, if anyone's planning to move, it's still, you know, I would say, you know, if you're planning to sell, it's a good time to do it when the buyer is is allowed to pay less interest rates. Right. So before the rates go up anymore, you know? Well, not, not only that, you know, a lot of your sellers, unless they're paying cash, they're they're, 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 they got the same, they got about the same interest rates that 100%. the buyers have to. Yeah, so right? better to beat the market out. And um, of course, if you guys have any loan questions, Daryl's awesome and he's, he's great. We'll, we'll, we'll be scrolling his information on the video so you can contact Daryl and he's with Diversified Capital. Um, you know, thank you so much for your help. Well, thank you. And you guys, yeah, if you have questions about your homes or your purchase or anything that I can do, I'm Lisa Doyle. You guys give me a call. Take care. Stay well.